Adsorption. It is defined as a phenomenon of accumulation of one substance on the surface of the other substance such that there is a change in concentration at the interfacial layer between two without sensible penetration into it. Adsorption is also known as a surface phenomenon. Why it is known as surface phenomenon? In case of liquids and solids, the inside molecules are attracted equally from all the sides while those present on the surface are attracted only by the inward forces. If we see this diagram, the inner molecule is been attracted from equally from all the sides while if you see the molecule which is on the surface is attracted only by the inward forces. As a result of those unbalanced forces which is on the surface the solid and the liquid surface tend to attract and retain the other molecules on their surface by forming a bond between them and surface molecules. Thus, there is an accumulation of one substance on the surface of the other substance forming higher concentration layer. If we see the molecule of adsorbate which has been bonding with the molecule which is on the surface, this phenomenon is adsorption. Hence, adsorption is a surface phenomenon. Please note that. If concentration of the substance on the surface increases, adsorption is positive while if it decreases, adsorption is negative. Types of adsorption Depending upon type of forces that are operating between the molecules involved in adsorption, it is divided into two types that is physical adsorption or van der Waals adsorption or it is known as physiosorption and chemical adsorption which is known as chemisorption physical adsorption it is a type of adsorption in which weak physical forces of attraction called van der Waals forces are developed between surface molecules of adsorb and molecule of adsorbate it is a common process and not a specific process. It is a reversible process. The adsorbs layer is multimolecular. Rate of adsorption is very high. Heat of adsorption is low. For example, adsorption gases like ammonia, sulfur dioxide, chlorine on charcoal for chemical adsorption it is a type of adsorption in which strong chemical bonds are developed between surface molecules of adsorbent and molecule of adsorbate it is a sp specific process it is a irreversible in nature the adsorbed layer is unimolecular only rate of adsorption is very low it has very high heat of adsorption Example, adsorption of oxygen or carbon dioxide on tungsten. We see factors affecting adsorption. Phenomena of adsorption of gaseous or liquid adsorbate on solid adsorbate depend upon the following factors. We give five factors over here. Nature and the surface area of adsorbent applicable for liquid as well as gaseous adsorbate. Adsorption is a surface phenomenon, thus rate of adsorption is directly proportional to the surface area of adsorbent. Larger the surface area and rougher is the surface of adsorbent, more is the adsorption. Second, the nature of adsorbent. It is applicable for gaseous adsorbent. The amount of gas, gas adsorbed depends upon the nature of gas, gas adsorbed. The gas which are liquefied easily and highly soluble in water get adsorbed to a greater extent than the gas which are less soluble in water and cannot be liquidified easily under the given condition of temperature and pressure. Gases like sulfur dioxide, ammonia, 
carbon dioxide which is liquefy more easily are adsorbed more readily than the permanent gases like H2, N2 and O2 which do not liquefy easily. This is because the easily liquefiable gases have greater molecular forces of attraction called van der Waals forces of attraction. Third, temperature applicable for liquid as well as gaseous adsorbent. Adsorption is an exothermic process. It takes place with the evolution of heat. Thus, adsorption decreases with increase in temperature. At low temperature, the extent of adsorption is more. If the temperature of coconut charcoal is lower from 244 Kelvin to 195 Kelvin, the amount of nitrogen gas adsorbed increases from 20 cm3 to 45 cm3 under the same pressure. Fourth, pressure of gas applicable for gaseous adsorbent. For a given gas and a given adsorbent, extent of adsorption depends on the pressure of gas. Magnitude of adsorption decreases with decrease in pressure and vice versa. The, various, the variation of adsorption with pressure and constant temperature is expressed graphically by curve known as adsorption isotherm. Fifth, concentration of liquid applicable for liquid adsorbents. This increases in concentration of adsorbent causes increase in adsorption. However, this increase is not directly proportional under all the conditions. It is more effective at low temperature. It can be explained by plotting the adsorption isotherms. Adsorption isotherms Curves obtained by plotting the amount of gas adsorbed on a solid adsorbent surface versus pressure of the gas at constant temperature are called as adsorption isotherm. There are seven types of physical adsorption isotherm have been reported. Catalysis The phenomena of increasing the rate of chemical reaction with the help of catalyst is known as catalysis. The reaction, the rates of which are accelerated by catalyst are called as catalyzed reaction. General characteristics of catalysis from the definition of catalyst, it seems that as a catalyst is not consumed, it does not participate in the chemical reaction. However, in reality, the catalyst takes part in a chemical reaction. It combines with one or more of the reactant molecules to form an intermediate which is a complex of reactant and catalyst. That is, reactant plus catalyst gives us complex. The complex decomposes to yield the products and regenerates the catalyst. That is, complex decomposes to products plus catalyst because the catalyst is recovered unchanged at the end of reaction it is not consumed in the reaction in a reversible reaction catalyst increases the rate of both forward and reverse reaction equal equally hence the position of equilibrium is not influenced and the value of equilibrium constant is not affected by the presence of catalyst an extremely small amount of catalyst causes considerably increase in the rate of reaction. The activation of energy of catalyst reaction is always lower than that of same reaction when it, it is uncatalyzed. This implies that the catalyst makes the reaction to occur by path of lower activation energy. The catalyst does not affect the energies of reactant and products of the reaction. Hence, energies are the same for both catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction. Generally, catalyst increases the rate of reaction already in progress. It is therefore considered that the catalyst does not initiate the reaction. However, in certain cases, the catalyst is found to initiate the reaction. Inhibition or retardation A substance that decreases the rate of chemical reaction is called as an inhibitor. The phenomena in which the rate of chemical reaction is reduced by inhibitor is called as inhibition or retardation. Classification of catalysts There are two types. Catalysts and the phenomena of catalysts are classified into two types. Homogeneous catalysts and heterogeneous catalysts. Homogeneous catalysts 
is a catalyst which exists in the same phase as a reactant. Homogeneous catalyst is dissolves in the gas phase or solution and acts uniformly throughout the gas or solution. Example of homogeneous catalyst can be given as the formation of SO3 in lead chamber process of the manufacture of H2SO4 is catalyzed by nitric oxide or nitrogen dioxide that is SO2 in a gaseous state plus half of O2 in a gaseous state which in the presence of nitric oxide which is both or that is NO2 gaseous state which gives us SO3 gas. The catalyst and the reactant are present in the same gaseous phase. Heterogeneous catalyst A catalyst which exists in different phase form the reactant is known as heterogeneous catalyst. Heterogeneous catalyst is generally a solid and the reactant are either gaseous or liquids. The solid catalyst is added to the re reaction mixture. It does not dissolve in reacting system. In fact, the reaction occurs on the surface of solid catalyst. Hence, the reaction so catalyzed are called as surface reactions. The heterogeneous catalyst by solid catalyst involves the following. We see for the example of heterogeneous catalyst. The hydrogenation of unsaturated compounds is catalyzed by finely divided metals like nickel or platinum. That is, if we see H2C, double bond CH2 in a gaseous state, plus of H2 in a gaseous state. In the presence of platinum or nickel, which gives us three C CH three gas state. The principle is used in a food industry for the conversion of unsaturated vegetable vegetable oils to solid fats. Collides. A colloidal solution is a heterogeneous mixture of two immiscible substances where the size of one of the substances is between 10 raised to minus 9 meter to 10 raised to minus 6 meter. Example starch solution. The substance whose size is between 10 raised to minus 9 meter to 10 raised to minus 6 meter is said to be a colloidal state. There are three phenomena that is colloidal solution, true solution and suspension. Colloidal solution it is a heterogeneous mixture whose particle size is between 10 raised to minus 9 meter to 10 raised to minus meter, 10 raised to minus 6 meter. The colloidal solution is a pulmonary turbid. Particles in a given dispersion all carry either positive or negative charge. Particles are visible under ultra microscope example starch solution. For true solution. It is a homogeneous mixture whose particle size is less than 10 raised to minus 9 meter. The solution is clear and transparent. Particle may be unchanged molecules or charged ions, both cations and anions. Particles are not visible under ultra microscope, example sodium chloride and water. For suspension, it is a heterogeneous mixture. The size of a particle is greater than 10 raised to minus 6 meter. The system is obcube. The particles are molecules which separates out. The particles are visible under microscope or to the naked eye. Dispersed phase. The substance whose particle size is between 5 into 10 raised to minus 9 meter to 2 into 10 raised to minus 7 meter in the colloidal state is known as dispersed phase or internal phase. Dispersion medium that is solvent the medium in which the solution is prepared that is the other substance distributed is known as dispersion medium 
example water is a starch solution so if the dispersion medium is water then it is known as hydrosol for alcohol it is known as alkosols for benzene it is known as benzols and for air it is known as aerosols classification of colloid system depending on the forces of attraction between dispersed phase and dispersion medium we have two of them that is lipophilic solution that is hydrophilic one is lipophobic solution that is hydrophobic lipophilic solution dispersed phase and dispersion medium attract each other reversible that is colloidal solution to precipitate viscosity is higher than that of dispersion medium that is water surface tension is lower than that of dispersion medium that is water particles cannot be easily detected under ultra microscope substance with higher molecular weight will form a lipophilic solution example solution of protein starch lipophobic solution dispersed phase and dispersion medium do not attract each other Irris irreversible that is colloidal solution to precipitate viscosity is nearly the same as that of dispersion medium that is water surface tension is the same as that of dispersion medium particles can be easily detected under ultra microscope substances with low molecular weight will form lipophobic solution example solution of metals and sulfides classification on the basis of number of molecules or atoms in the colloidal particles we have two in this that is multimolecular colloids and macromolecular colloids the colloidal system are classified depending upon the number of molecules or atoms involved in the colloidal particles the colloidal particles are higher for multimolecular colloids the colloidal particles are higher are bigger than than the molecule of true solution and smaller than the particles of suspension in general the colloidal particles are aggregates of numerous atoms or molecule the mul the multimolecular colloids are those system in which the dispersed phase particle are aggregates of many atoms or molecules gold solution silver solution sulfur solution are the example of the multimolecular so colloids let us for macromolecular colloids some sus substance called intrinsic colloids on treatment with a suitable dispersion medium readily from colloidal dispersion the colloidal particles in such system are not aggregates of molecules but are single ma macromolecules having the size in the colloidal range such colloidal systems consisting of single macromolecules of colloidal sizes are called as macromolecular colloids the aqueous solution of protein solution of rubber and high polymeric materials in the organic solvent are called colloidal system of macromolecules the colloidal solution of high polymers behave like lipophilic solution high polymeric solution do not carry an electrical charge and do not migrate in a electrical field some polymeric species themselves form ions and hence can migrate migrate in a electrical field such macromolecules are called as colloidal electrolytes properties of colloids general properties it is a heterogeneous system filterability and diffusibility colloidal particles can pass through filter paper but cannot pass through fragment membrane that is diffuse this property is known as dialysis dialysis the removal of dissolved impurities that is electrolytes from colloidal solution by diffusion through fragment membrane or cell phone is known as dialysis it is used to purify colloidal solution molecular weight colloidal particles have very high molecular weight example starch osmotic pressure colloidal particles are big in size hence the number of particles in solution is small and hence osmotic pressure is very low osmotic pressure is inversely proportional to molecular weight mechanical property of kinetic 
of kinetic property that is brownian moment it is defined as a constant random zigzag motion of colloidal particles along a straight line in a colloidal solution if we see the particles move zigzag The movement can be observed using the ultra microscope. It depends on the viscosity of solution. It is more rapid if size of particles is small. Second, the Brownian movement is due to the repulsion between colloidal particles which have same electrical charge. Collision of colloidal particles with the molecule of dispersion medium. Its application can be used for algorithm. Avogadro's number can be determined. Brownian movement makes the solution stable. Coagulation of colloids. The process of precipitation of colloids due to aggregation after removal of charge on them is known as coagulation. Colloidal particles are stable due to identical charge. Hence, when the charge on the particle is neutralized, they aggregate and form a precipitate. We give a method of coagulation over here. Boiling. On heating the absorbed ion are desorbed from colloidal particles and hence the particle lose charge and the solution gets coagulated. Example, we can give as silver halide. Gets coagulated on heating. Mutual coagulation. When two solutions having opposite charge colloidal particles are mixed together as equimolar quantities, the charge on both the colloidal particles gets neutralized and both gets coagulated. Example, when the negatively charged arsenic trisulfide solution is added to the positively charged iron hydroxide solution, a suitable proportion coagulation of both the solution takes place. Third, erythrophoresis. Under the influence of electrical current, all the colloidal particles migrate towards the oppositively charged electrode where the charge on colloids gets neutralized and the colloids get coagulated. Addition of electrolyte When a strong electrolyte is added to a solution, precipitation or coagulation of colloids takes place, which is explained by hardy schulz rule. hardy schulz rule it states that the ion of electrolytes which has opposite charge to that of the colloidal particles is responsible for the coagulation. Second, the coagulation power is directly proportional to the valency of the ion. Flocculation When coagulated particles of solution floats on the dispersion medium, then the process is known as flocculation. Emulsions. Emulsions are the colloidal systems in which the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium both are emissible liquid. Example, milk. Emulsions are classified into two types that is water and oil and oil and water. Water and oil. In such emulsions, the liquid oil is the dispersion medium and water is the dispersed phase. Example, cod liver oil or cold cream. Oil in water. In this emulsions, water is dispersion medium and the other liquid oil is a dispersed phase. Example, milk or vanishing cream. Emulsions are generally unstable, hence to obtain stable emulsion, a substance is added which forms a protective layer over the dispersed liquid. The substance added is known as emulsifier. The process of obtaining stable emulsion is called as emulsification. Example, soap and detergents. Its application can be seen in cleansing action of soap or detergent. Emulsion of phenyl in water is used for disinfectant. In preparation of 
pharmaceuticals many pains are used in immersion form electrical properties origin of charge on colloidal particles and we have electrophoresis an original of charge on colloidal particles it is observed that a small quantity of electrolytes is essential for stability of colloidal solution second the colloidal particles have a large surface area due to which the selectively adsorb ions of electrolyte which are common to it third due to pre parental adsorption all colloidal particles have identical charge due to which the repel each other making the colloidal solution stable for electrophoresis it is defined as a unidirectional migration of colloidal particles to the opposite charge electrode under the influence of electrophile if we see this diagram the charge moving from one electrode to the opposite opposite ally charge moving from electrode to the oppositely electrode charge if we see the green part is an electrode the solution which is is of arsenic trisulfide solution it can be illustrated by using a u shaped tube filled with a colloidal solution that is blue color that is glass tube the pure solvent carefully poured so has to make a sharp boundary two electrodes are kept inside the solution and a potential is applied using an external source that is battery the boundary between the solution and the solvent moves in one arm containing positive electrons and down in another arm during electrophoresis the colloidal particles move towards the opposite charge electrodes where they lose their charge and aggregate to form a precipitate the process is known as coagulation of colloids its application can be used to detect the charge on colloidal particles to bring about coagulation of colloidal particles rubber plating of different metals wood or both purification of sewage water separation of proteins nanomaterials the materials that have at least one dimension between 1 meter to 100 meter are called as nanomaterials the nanomaterials with only one dimension between 1 nanometer and 100 nanometer are called as nanolayers those nanomaterials with two dimension in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer are termed as nanotubes or nanowires and those with a free dimension are known as nanoparticles the quantum dots are semiconductor nanoparticles about 1 to 10 nanometer in diameter properties they have a lower melting points than the bulk material they tend to have a greater reactivity than the bulk material they have a different color than the bulk material like gold nanoparticles are red whereas gold metal is yellow they have a substance they have a substantial percentage of atoms on the surface and are therefore bound less tightly than those within the bulk solid application of nanomaterials are seen in various but like gold nanoparticles are highly effective as selective oxidation catalyst carbon nanotubes are used as strengthening rods and toughening elements in structural composite materials the use of several nano particles including quantum dots as possible weapons in the fight against cancer are under consideration the metal oxide nano nanoparticles are widely used in sunscreens and cosmetics stain resistant fabrics and dot repellent paints optical properties optical properties are divided into two subtopic that is tindall effect and colors of solution tindall effect it is defined as the visibility of light when it passes through a colloidal solution due to its scattering by a colloidal size of particles if you see we have a diagram it's of tindall effect colloidal particles scatter the light in all possible direction the passage of light becomes visible in the form of a cone with bluish thing when passed through a colloidal solution which is known as tindall cone
This part is known as tyndall cone. When observed at a right angle through microscope in a dark room, the colloidal particle appears as bright specks moving in a random motion. The arrangement is known as an ultra microscopic application of tyndall effect can be seen can be used for detecting the presence of colloidal particles in the solution second that is colors of solution different color of the colloidal solution is due to scattering of light by different size of colloidal particles color of sky is also due to a tyndall effect 